In the last two weeks, we actually discussed the complete story about what a Syncly linked list is, and also how to implement it. Uh, using generic classes in Java, and also how you can compare its performances against array. So the very important conclusion and lesson to learn is no data structure is actually perfect. You always have to make a balance between which one to choose, but depending on the need of your application. And uh, this week, I would like to start with uh, a very small uh, extension to the Syncly linked list due to its uh, some uh, its uh, imperfections. Uh, two of them. One is about the performance, and the other one is about its design to really, mainly to simplify your code if you actually have such a small extension. Uh, so these are the two things I would like to talk about, right? So one thing is about performance, the other one is about the design of your Java code. So these are the two things I'm gonna focus on. And after this, we're gonna move on to talk about other uh, data structure or even abstract data type. That's something we'll talk about in the second half of this week. But one thing at a time, let's now go back to our understanding about Syncly linked list. Especially, let's recall how we actually have to handle edge cases, meaning that so there are certain cases for which we have to explicitly write some conditional or uh, some code to really address that. Let's take a look. For example, let's uh, re uh, recall the method for add first. If we want to add a first note into the uh, uh, chain of notes, in which case, if the current size of the list, meaning that before we add the uh, new elements, the list is simply just empty. So after adding these new elements, the new head and the new tail, they should really become the same, right? So this is kind of like an edge case that we have to handle. And we have to handle that explicitly by writing some code. And the second example will be, let's recall the remove first method over here, also a mutator. And in that case, we want to say if the current size of the uh, list is simply just one, meaning that after removing the first node, the list will just become empty, in which case both the head and the tail will be set to null, right, accordingly. Remember, we actually said that we actually declare the two attributes head and tail uh, because we want to trade uh, the space uh, for time. So that's why we always got these two attributes. And the catch is whenever you actually update, uh, update uh, the uh, states of your simply linked list, meaning that you actually have to uh, maybe insert a node, delete a node, or do whatever. If the consequence is really uh, to change the head and tail, you will have to make sure you update these two attributes accordingly. Otherwise, you will just get inconsistent values for these two attributes. So these are just two examples over here. But the main thing I want to point out is for different methods that you have to implement for simply linked list, whenever the consequence for the method, if it is to really change the beginning or the end of the uh, list, in that case, you have to explicitly write some code to really update the tail or the head or both. That's the main lesson, right? And this is kind of sound like an overhead for us as an implementer. Wouldn't it be nice if we can somehow have some small extension to our singly linked list so that we don't really have to write such explicit code? So the simpler, the better, right? That's really the principle for software design. You want to make it so simple, of course, not too much simple, right? So what we want to do is we want to see uh, how a small extension would be possible uh, to really simplify our uh, writing for the uh, for this uh, linked list uh, code, especially for any new methods that you may have to implement later for yourself, you will be able to be free from such explicit writing for the special cases after the small extension. Some of them, all right, all right. That's the first thing I would like to point out. So the first thing is we need we need a small extension to really improve the design for the code. And let me emphasize, whatever we have right now over here to have the explicit case for this and also for the ex uh, and also the explicit case for this, nothing wrong with them, right? They are correct, 100%. However, we would like to make the code itself just simpler while we still want the code to be correct, right? Correctness is definitely something we will, we will not want to compromise. But at the same time, if we can actually improve the design uh, by simplifying the code, why not? Right, that's why what we're talking about. Nothing wrong with what we have done uh, before. It's just that we want to, uh, to do even better in terms of the design. All right, and the second thing I would like to talk about is about the performance. But let's recall uh, what the performance is like for singly linked list. Remember the table that we did at the end of uh, last week. So I would like you to recall that table. Maybe you even want to review it. Okay. Well, we know that uh, the singly linked list perform pretty well in terms of the uh, what. Well, when I say pretty well, I mean a constant amount of time, right? So for example, if you want to insert to the front or to the end, 
or if you want to remove from the front, eh, notice that I didn't say remove from the last, right? So that's something we knew. It's uh, something that uh, will take linear time for the singly linked list to, uh, to perform. As to why, you have to review uh, from the previous uh, uh, module material. And also, if you want to insert uh, or delete in the middle, given the reference for that particular node, right? That's something you want to. And let me just emphasize, when I say delete, when you want to insert, you can simply just uh, be given the reference for the for the uh, just be given the reference of the element you want to create a node from, right? In the case of delete, uh, in the case of deletion, of course, you cannot really give the reference just for the node itself that you want to delete. You want to give the reference to the previous node so that you can actually uh, delete the next node without uh, having to take a linear time. So it would only take constant time, right? That's something also we discussed in detail from the from before. So just notice that. So here, here when I say given a reference to the previous node, that's really what I meant, right? But in the case of insertion, you only have to uh, give the reference to the node after which you want to insert node, right? So that's uh, something you want to uh, make sure you understand, right? But the performance for singly linked list simply will suffer Let's say if you want to go to access the middle of the list, which will take a linear time for sure. And also if you want to remove from the end, in which case you have to get to the uh, second last note reference, right? Because we don't have the previous reference for the last note, right? So these are all the uh, discussions that we actually had, which are pretty important to really get insight into singly linked list. I would like you to make sure you're really uh, uh, feeling comfortable about all these, right? Nothing's new so far. So we may again, try to improve the performance by trading the space for time, right? Would it be possible just to introduce maybe some extra attributes, for example, that's why we're saying we are trading space for time, by storing some more uh, data or by storing some more information in each individual node that's in the chain. Would it be possible we can improve the performance, especially for linear, uh, you know, improve from linear down to uh, constant? Would it be possible, right? That's something we'd like to see. Right, so just like how we store the size and tail attributes, uh, you know, to really, uh, uh, to to really make sure every time we want the size or the last note, we can simply return the attribute value. Right, we want we would like to do something like that. Right, so now that's why we want to introduce a new extended notion called doubly linked list as opposed to singly linked list. I mean, just literally, you can already kind of uh, imagine how how it's going to be different from, from the singly linked list. Rather than linking just to your next node, now you can link to also your previous node, right? That's why it's called doubly linked list. Let's go over some ideas and I'll give you some intu uh, intuitive introduction and draw some diagram. So that'll be the goal for this part of the lecture. And then we're going to see how we can implement it precisely in Java in the next part. Okay. Let's just go over some slides. So this is a very pretty good uh, illustration about how the doubly linked list will look like. You can see the only extension we have, there are two extensions over here. Number one, you can see from this node over here, not only that we got the next node reference over here, but also we got its previous node reference. So that's the first extension. We have a previous node for every node over here, right? The previous reference, that's extension number one. Extension number two, you can see rather than having simply the head and tail references, we actually now got something called header, which is itself a note. And also we got something called trailer, which is also itself a note, right? That's also different from the singly linked list, right? Again, two differences. One is about the previous node reference. Number two is about the introduction of something called header and also trailer, which are themselves also notes. That's something I will explain a little bit more when I go over the bullet points. So each node in a doubly linked list, as I said, is going to be stored not only what we used to store for the singly linked node, but also we're going to have the previous node, exactly this reference over here, right? It's really worth repeating this because it is so important to understand what the fundamental, dif fundamental difference is between a singly linked node versus a doubly linked node. Right, symmetry, right? You can think about uh, symmetrically, we're gonna go. We can either go to the next for each node. We can go to its next, or we could go to its previous node. Right? It's symmetry. And each li uh, the, each doubly linked list. Right? You can see uh, that's the acronym for doubly linked list. What about each doubly linked list? What should we store? In the case of the singly linked list, if you recall, what do we store? We store attributes size, head, and tail. 
right? Size is integer. Head and tail are simply just the references to some simply linked though. But for now, for doubly linked list, we'll do something similar, but not exactly the same. But you want to pay attention to that. So each doubly simply linked list, uh, each doubly doubly sync, uh, doubly linked list simply store the following. Well, there will be a reference to a dedicated header node, which is this one here. All right, and also a reference to a dedicated trailer node, which is over here. Right? You should really think about conceptually the header and trailer are not really part of the uh, the list that store elements. They do they do not store anything meaningful. They only store their next or previous reference uh, if uh, if applicable. Let, let's take a look. So unlike a uh, singly linked list, doubly linked list simply do not store the reference to the head and tail, right? That's something I just remarked earlier. And these two special nodes are sometimes called sentinels or guards. In, uh, I'm pretty sure you know about the words guards, but for this word over here, in case you have any doubts, let me show you some very quick uh, dictionary lookup. You can definitely look up your dictionary as well. If you look up the word sentinel, right? That you said is basically uh, a person or uh, a person assigned to keep the guard, right? It's pretty much like a synonym to guard. And also in the case of computing, it's really something that really to mark the beginning or the end of a particular block of information. That's exactly what we're having now. If you got a doubly linked uh, chain of notes, you want to mark what where the beginning is, which is the header. And also you want to mark where the, the end is, which is the trailer, right? That's the sentinel. Just want to make sure you understand this word, right? You can look up your dictionary as well. All right, but uh, you can call the sentinels or guards interchangeably, which one, uh, whichever way you like. They do not store any data, but they only store no references. Specifically, the header node over here, you can take a look over here. The header itself does not store any meaningful data you can see conceptually in the middle. It only got its next node reference to the very first node in the list that stores meaningful data. Right, and for the header node, you can see uh, the there should be also an attribute field for the previous node. But in this case, it's simply just uh, pointing to now. I'm gonna visualize a little bit more uh, in detail in a moment. Okay, so that's for the header node. And for the trailer node, symmetrically, the trailer node also doesn't store anything meaningful uh, in the data field over here in the middle. However, it does have its previous reference pointing to the very last node in the chain of nodes. However, it's the uh, next node because already the trailer already the end, so it does not simply point to anything meaningful, like a null. Okay. And they always exist, even in the case of empty list. This is also very important. So that's why I would like to show to you some visualization before I actually uh, go back to uh, go to show you about how to implement them in Java. Let's take a look.